we were really excited. Or I was really excited to have you. Fahad obviously didn't know that you were going to come on. Uh, yeah. So just to kind of give you a quick, I guess, introduction of how these go is like we just have a conversation um, typically about uh, food and spirituality, but it could really go anywhere. It's more just ad hoc, free flow, like wherever the wind takes us, you know. Um, and I feel like last time, I'm not sure, Fahad, by the way, if you've seen my uh, live with Judith before. We went live quite a while back, um, but we had a really nice conversation. And I think uh, mm -hmm. I just thought it would be this would be like the perfect opportunity to catch up with you again. And also, it's been a while since we've seen each other. So I, I yeah, I, I wanted to bring you on. Um, and yes. uh, just to, I guess, kick this off, my I guess my first question would be, um, so you're into raw foods currently, and I think you've been following this lifestyle for a while now. Uh, and I know from our audience on Instagram and for me, like you've already explained this, but maybe, um, what got you into this lifestyle and what is it that's currently keeping you in the pursuit of following it? Um, I started, um, one and a half years ago, it's all, only been about it's almost about one and a half years that i've been a fully raw vegan um, i started eating like this uh, because i had very bad eczema and on and off since my daughter was born she's now 12 years old and it was difficult to heal it you know i don't know i didn't know what i was allergic to and one week i would break out from this and the next week i would break out from another um food uh, i thought it was food or dust for example when we moved to another house and it was just uncontrolled and uh, it was painful sometimes it would break out you know all over my body and i also struggled to just lose i, I just wanted to lose about you know 10 kilos like i wanted to weigh like before i had my daughter and i struggled to get rid of the extra weight as well and uh, that is exactly what i did i found uh, some clips on YouTube, I actually didn't really know about raw veganism at all. And over the years, I have tried to eat healthy and I went vegan in 2009, 2019, sorry. And um, I did start eating meat again a little bit. And then I went vegetarian again. And obviously, the dairy didn't help that I also ate dairy, um, you know, just before I went raw vegan. And yeah, so it didn't really, I didn't let my body heal itself, you know, from the proper foods, you know, even that I was eating quite healthy, but every now and then we would eat, you know, some junk food or like, like everybody else. And yes, and that is why I'm actually um, started also my channel because I wanted to spread the message that my eczema is basically uh, gone. It took me a bit longer than a year because I had a very bad um, health problem. So it wasn't a quick fix for me. And um, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I feel really good. Um, and uh, it also fixed a lot of my other health issues as well. It's not just my eczema. It's I had low, a little bit of lower back pain and a lot of weird things that weird symptoms that just gone away by eating really healthy. And um, mm -hmm. it's also I found something that I really love doing, like talking about raw foods. And I started helping people as well in my community losing weight and being healthy. I helped a couple of ladies already and they lost weight and the healing started and it's been just amazing. Yeah, that's a, in a, in a short version. <laughs> in a nutshell. Say. Yeah. That's so amazing that you started coaching already. Like I saw some of your um, yeah. content on Instagram. Uh, and like, I don't know, but to me, it, I always find it so inspiring that especially people in the raw food community, but I'm sure it's like this, like in other aspects where people find like a solution for themselves or find something for themselves that's really helped them out of like a dark place. And they go on to spread that and share that light with other people. It's just, I find it so inspiring and it just makes like my heart smile <laughs> a bit on the inside. Um, so that's really, really yeah. amazing yeah. to hear. Thank you. And yeah, it's, it's also very cool that, um, just just want to quickly add this. No, it's no. also very cool that a lot of people um, who are into raw food, um, they try this, they experiment this, and and raw food doing its magic. It's actually not the raw food doing its magic, but yeah. raw food allowing the body 
to do its magic for the very first time. And then when you see that magic happen, you experiment and you just went uh, into it as a test, right? Mm -hmm. And then you see the power of your body doing magic and suddenly you're like, wow, this is so beautiful. This is so amazing. And, and then you have this so powerful of an urge in you to go and spread this to other people because you want to share this light with other people as well, right? So I think we all share this in common as raw mm -hmm. foodists to go out there and bring this uh, light in front of people. <laughs> exactly. And uh, what's really interesting yeah. is in my immediate community here in South Africa, they don't know what raw food, uh, raw, raw mm. veganism is, you know, raw, being a raw mm. vegan. Um, they know what a vegan is, but when I try to explain to them, okay, let's eat healthy and I, and I give them a, you know, a meal plan, then they, well, they get overwhelmed. So what I started doing is these ladies that I coach, I coach them to be vegans first, just so they're eating cooked vegan food also, and sort of like a high, high raw. You know, they would eat as much raw as possible and uh, they would eat cooked food as well because um, it's just very difficult for some people to immediately go to, um, you know, being like 100% raw. So I just work with people that wherever they are in their journey. So I don't push the people to do what they're not ready yet because then they start detoxing yeah. and some emotional things will come up. And then they, some people get, um, you know, you sometimes it is scary when your emotional uh, like sort of like almost like a dark side comes out that you have to deal with, you know? So you have to take it step yeah. by step and it depends on the person. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Is there, I, are there any, yeah, real quick, are there any, Judith, are there any sort of these emotions that you felt uh, while, while you were transitioning? Do you want to share those? And do you want to share how you, over, how, how you overcame it? Yes, I think that, it's scary to to um, start eating like this because then you exposed a lot of the, for example, the social aspects, like everybody connects socially. I know you hear that from everybody that talks about it, but I think that's one of the biggest hurdles is that even my clients that are just cooked vegans and they're not 100% raw, they even realize that when um, people respond to them like they there's something wrong with them or they weird why are they eating like this you know so if you become 100 percent raw what happened to me is that uh, i had to weigh other i had to find other ways to connect with people other than food mm -hmm. so we would have barbecues and mm -hmm. the south african people are a very sociable nation so they would have drinks you know they would invite you over and they would bribe for you we call it brying which is like a barbecue and then i would just um kind of pitch up with my own food i would tell them before and i'll bring something and then i would have my own fruit or my own salad and first it was weird like it, it made me feel you know like um, excluded sort of like you you feel alone you know but then you realize yeah. that the people don't actually really care you know once you do it once or twice they get used to it and they carry on as long as they don't have to worry about catering for you that's what i find yeah. so that's what how i overcome uh, or feel attacked challenges i you? prepare everything like wherever we go we can go playing mini golf with the family then i will just pack in a small cooler box all my own things then I don't have to worry about being hungry or eating at the restaurant where everybody else is eating, you know? So the mm. preparation mm. Is, is key. So that was one of my, um, I would say a bit of a trigger, you know, because you already feel excluded. Let's say if you're ill and you have a big health issue, you already feel like, you know, uh, it's a big emotional thing. You know, whoever had a big right. health issue, you feel like you, you're already not doing a lot of things that other people are not doing because you're trying to heal yourself, you know, and you already feel a little bit excluded from, the, from your surroundings and from your friends. So uh, they don't understand what you're going through. They're just supporting you. And now you're eating raw vegan and now it's going to be this <laughs> another divide, <laughs> you know, but then you have to find something to to actually connect with people. And I found so many new ways to connect with everybody. I have such yeah. better relationships with people because I really listen to them. It's not about the food. It's not about sitting around everybody just eating and drinking yeah. alcohol, you know? Yeah. There's so much, um, like, everything that we do socially almost before transitioning to a lifestyle like this, 
I, I've realized like really revolves around food and I didn't quite understand the extent to which it does until I transitioned to eating this way because it's like okay we go to work events you know I was working at a corporate job before I came back to Turkey we go to work events and it's like it's either a dinner or drinks or you know there's always some kind of snacks going on that people are just munching on on the side and um, it can definitely feel excluding and also um, something that I felt like when I was going through those moments where I'm, I'm just like eating my watermelon and everyone's eating chips or pizza or something. Um, it's like you kind of crave that sense of connection because we, we do get connected through food. Like I enjoy it so much when I sit down with a group of people and we all share like a durian or something or like mangoes or a really mm -hmm. juicy, crunchy like watermelon. Like it gives you the sense of, of flow. Like you're not in, you're not always contradicting your environment. Um, but I think something to also see separately from that is there's always an opportunity when you're doing that, when you're kind of like being the trailblazer and a trendsetter, like doing something new, there's always an opportunity to plant seeds in people's minds. Like people are curious. They just want to know, you know, oftentimes we think we're, we're being judged or we're quite self-conscious of our ways. Mm -hmm. um, and the reality is like not a lot of people know about raw veganism, just like you said, they, they don't know about fruitarianism and fasting and like all of these modalities that are truly the way to heal because th these modalities have been suppressed for obvious reasons. And so it sparks people's curiosity, like they're, they're just curious and want to know what it's all about. And um, if, yeah. if you're, you're sleeping on those opportunities, maybe you're, you're missing out the chance to inspire people in certain ways that will, will also impact their lives for the better. So in a way like this, it really comes down to how comfortable you are in your authenticity and, and truly being yourself. You know, that's that's what I've 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 personally had to really come to terms with because I was so self-conscious about being the odd one out in the beginning, like always eating a fruit meal or something when everyone was eating everything else. It's really funny going through those those phases but eventually i think you, you become comfortable in your authenticity if you really really like understand what this is all about you know what this whole lifestyle is yeah. all about yeah yeah no absolutely and that's when um i think for people who are wanting to transition or have transition and 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 like did not feel very motivated or lost motivation that's mm -hmm. when you need to have that belief in raw food right the belief in yourself and the belief in this lifestyle and the wonders that it can do to you because when you're clear on the why like why am i doing this the mm -hmm. how becomes so easy mm -hmm. right yeah. and um, situations like these like work events or you know barbecue events or whatever the event might be you could essentially be the light right you don't have to go on attacking each other everybody's um food or whatever they're eating but you do what you have to do mm -hmm. and um, there's a certain beauty of being authentic like Estra said uh, of being you in such a setting like you attract eyeballs you attract energies and suddenly people are so curious but that only happens when you are crystal clear on why why is it that you want to perceive uh, pursue this right um yeah <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really cool um, what you said Judith, I, I want to ask you, because you mentioned like in the beginning, you dabbled in like when you were transitioning or um, when you were just trying to figure out your way around this health information. Obviously, there's a, there's a lot of information out there and it can sometimes be overwhelming for people that truly want to get a grasp on their health. Um, and you mentioned you dabbled a little bit back and forth with me. I'm just curious, like both on a physical level and on a spiritual level, like how you felt the implications of that. On, on yourself yes I, I think that i wouldn't have started eating meat unless we were moving countries so we moved from south africa to hungary and we lived there for eight months and i was a vegan before we left and then in hungary it was um really difficult because i didn't know uh, where to get all my uh, goodies you know that i used to eat and and you know another country has different uh, food items and everything and there was a lot of stress so the stress made me sort of, you know, the, the, 
the circumstance made me sort of start eating meat in a way. You know what I'm saying? I know it sounds, um, but that was the truth. Uh, if I think about it, that was the truth because it was just so much easier because I had to prepare food for everybody. And and when I started eating it, I tasted it a little bit, even though I didn't really like it so much, but then it was just made my life easier because I still have to cook for my family as well and they're not vegans. And uh, I still have to do it every day, but I've got a routine, you know? So um, anyway, so when we were there and when I started eating meat again, it was really not nice. I didn't feel very good, you know, like from the emotional aspect and the physical aspect. Um, we didn't eat a lot of meat, though, there when we lived there. And then we moved back here. Um, yeah, so when I was there, uh, emotionally, yes, it did affect me. It, it did have it. It brought me down. Like, definitely the energy of meat is definitely affects you. You know, the first time I went vegan, that was in 2019. That was before... We moved back to Hungary for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had such a detox from when I stopped eating meat. It was so interesting. A lot of people don't get that. But when I stopped eating dairy and meat, I had like really uh, things coming out of my intestines. It's like really horrible, you know, stuff. And I didn't, you know, I expected the raw vegan uh, detox be so much like that for me, you know, because people talk a lot about, you know, their intestines clearing up. I did have a lot of cleaning of my intestines when I went raw vegan, but the first time when I went vegan, that's when uh, most of my detoxing happened, actually. And then now mm, when I went wow. raw vegan, uh, I did release some mucus plague and things like that, but, um, mm. or plaque, sorry, um, but it was so weird. Like I immediately seen it was night and day. And um, like one of my clients, she said she's just so much more happier since she doesn't eat meat and she can't explain it in any other way as that it must have been the meat, you know, all the hormones and all the things that they pump the meat with, um, you yeah. know, and, uh, and before the animal dies and, um, you know, they before they slaughter them, they, they get anxious and all those hormones, uh, people eat those hormones in the meat and then that's why they feel more anxious even. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's definitely a, a big, big difference. You know, I, I did feel the, the meat pulling me down a bit and emotionally as well. It made it worse, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. 100%. I did a bit of an experiment because, um, you know, a few years ago, I, I used to smoke a lot, a lot, a lot. And I remember the first time I got into smoking cigarettes when I was like 15 or 16, you know, back in the day with my friends. The first puff I took, my body just rejected it. Yeah. It was like, why would anyone do something like this, right? But then when you're 16, you want to be cool and everything. So, you know, I went with it and I got addicted in, uh, with cigarettes. But it's, it's crazy how your body starts to adapt and is like, okay, we somehow have to adapt to this new, op new, new thing. Um, so I did, a, I did an experiment a few months ago where I just tasted a bit of meat just to see how my body reacts because I like to do these experiments. I had it and my body absolutely rejected it. First, it couldn't make sense. Like my mouth couldn't make sense of it, right? Um, and it's so chewy. It was so chewy and, and it's so like salty. It's like sour and sweet at the same time. So many, t like your body cannot make sense of it. Mm -hmm. And um, it rejected it as well. So I can fully understand how you were able to also probably feel in the moment. <laughs> I've been so curious to try that actually. Like I just, I mean, you should. I don't want to, I don't want to, cause I'm like, I mean, is it don't, even Don't worth? try the Turkish kebabs, you know, like don't try those. those <laughs> no, like. Just try normal meat, but. <laughs> even if I try, no, like even if I try cooked food, I don't think I'll be trying meat, but like. <laughs> I'm I'm curious to know. I don't think I'll try it to be honest, but I'm curious to know how it would feel right now after being two and a half years like fruitarian, raw vegan, wow, fasted, all of this, like, and then I just have some cooked food. I'm so curious because you know what? Actually, when I was fasting, um, I had the most absurd cravings. Like I was craving all kinds of things and that happens when there's like toxins moving through your bloodstream a lot of people experience that you might know you might know also from your clients like when they're detoxing they crave all kinds of stuff and it's really 
it's really prominent in the first, you know, four to six months of, of transitioning because you're moving a lot of gunk through your colon, through your arteries, through your lymph system. Um, and it goes to your brain and it like you get cravings from that. And um, when I was fasting, like I, I haven't had cravings like that in a really long time. And I told myself during the fast on my birthday <laughs> next year, I think I'm going to make an exception. Like I, I just want to have cooked food on that one day and just enjoy all these things that I'm craving so much right now. Just indulge on that one day. Um, and I made a list and I sent it to my mom and I was like, mom, can you cook me these things on my birthday? And she was like, of course. Oh my gosh. Like as long as you just want to, obviously, cause she just wants me to eat, <laughs> eat like regularly, like the way everyone else does. Um, and I was like, yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, but then after I broke my fast, the thought of that, um, it, it just became more and more like something I didn't want to do because I didn't really have those cravings anymore. And like the, the feeling of wanting salt in my mouth, that was something that was so prominent during the fast. That feeling just dissipated gradually. And all I wanted was just even now when I when I feel like hunger the sensation of hunger or just wanting to eat something, I crave something sweet. And I just feel like my taste buds, it was before that, before the fast as well. Like I, I, I would want sweet stuff when I feel like some hunger. But right now, every time I sit down and I have a meal, um, it's just like, it's the most pleasurable thing to eat. Like, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's so, so delicious. And I feel like when you really, really like understand what this is all about, what your body is really made to do and how it's made to, to thrive, like you, you become in tune with that. Like you understand that you're, you run on glycogen and sugar and your brain needs that your brain needs glycogen to thrive. Um, and so it sends you those signals. That's why like we need, or we crave, dessert when we have like a, a big salty regular meal you know um we run on sugar and that's uh i think like the closer you you become a, or you obtain like a pristine way of living so to speak the more you understand the signals of your body and what it what it actually wants and i think that's just such a beautiful thing to really really know know thyself the way they say it like both on a physical level and on a mental and emotional and spiritual level as well um, one of my biggest revelations, so to speak, like when I was uh, transitioning and when I um, adopted this way of living and more so after my fast, of course, I feel. Wow, yes. Uh, yeah. What I wanted to mention, what's really interesting, I never thought I'm going to have this, but I cannot eat chocolate. You know, the raw chocolate, a lot of raw mm. vegans can mm. eat chocolate. And I never had problems with chocolate. And since I'm, my diet clean my whole body up so much I had some chocolate uh, raw chocolate it was about probably last year uh, August so I was already a raw vegan for probably eight months and then what happened is that I had such anxiety I couldn't explain it to you and mm. I'm thinking you know it could be you know something some warning lights went up in my head and I'm thinking, you know, it could be from the chocolates because some people react to chocolate after they've been raw for a while. And then yeah. I did it again a couple of months later and the same thing, exact same thing happened. And I felt so horrible. And that's the only negative that I can say that I cannot have any chocolate, you know, raw chocolate anymore or raw <laughs> cocoa powder. Oh. So it's so sad. <laughs> that's only sad part. Oh, I feel bad for you. <laughs> Do you have although, chocolate? Always. No, no, I don't. But <laughs> I, I, when you said it, it felt very sad. So I'm sorry you're not able to have raw chocolate. But, but to be honest, like for some reason, I was uh, like, the thing is, my dad never taught me. So growing up, um, I was never given Coca-Cola, chocolate or ice cream. Mm. So even like, you know, before transitioning to a raw vegan diet, I was never hooked on chocolate um, or um you know, soft drinks or ice cream at all. So when you were telling me that there's this fruit apparently in Borneo in Indonesia, which which has like chocolatey texture to it, but it's a fruit. It's a proper organic fruit. So at which fruit is that? that? Has heard of which, which fruit is that? I'm curious. <laughs> I want to do some digging. Dude, 
by the way guys i don't know if you know like indonesia has so many different types so many exotic so out of the world fruits especially the island borneo it's crazy um and borneo is also where the orangutans the very few last orangutans are there uh, are living in the world which is really sad that they you know they're they're disappearing this quickly but um yeah so if you guys get a chance try that <laughs> chocolatey maybe you like do you know, do you know what the like name the is the real chocolate to it thank you do you know what the name is bahad no i don't know the name it kind of looks like sapota you guys know sapota sapoti 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 yeah 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 sapoti oh i think i know i know what you're talking about it's like the chocolate but then when you open it it's black on it's the inside like, it's black yeah it's green on the outside uh, i think it's called black sapote actually that's what it's called i've seen hmm, it really? i've like miami miami fruit i think they sell quite yeah, a bit they have be, them in turkey as well i said i'm going to be in thailand in two weeks time so maybe i'll see if they have it oh wow <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Two weeks. laughs> I know. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. We're going to Phuket and also Singapore. Oh my god! Wow. That's gonna be amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Is it cold there in in South Africa? Well, I'm right you're in now, a tank top, so imagine. Yeah, no, no, it's not cold. <laughs> right now, it's very hot. It's still part of like the end of the summer, so it's true because wow. it's the southern hemisphere, so it's swapped around. But it's been very hot lately, like 35, you know, and it's a bit too yeah. hot. <laughs> <laughs> i'm actually curious i never spoke uh, with anybody from south africa actually so i'm very curious what are the type of fruits i i do presume it's tropical out there right in south africa i've never been to that yes. part of the world yet um do you want to share a bit about the fruit scene there we, uh, yes yes we don't have uh, the very exotic fruits i can't buy them like some people would post more the exotic fruit like the one that you're talking about i never tasted that before but we have you know, it's also seasonal a little bit, but now, right now, we have mangoes and the watermelon season is almost finished. And uh, you have different types of melons and uh, pineapple. And then, obviously, on the yeah. our winter time, which will be coming in July, June, July, August, then it's usually the citrus fruits. So I just usually eat mm. um, all these fruits and we've got lychees and all the things that maybe you're not used to eating, you know, like the base, we, we get that a lot as well. And um, we've got obviously the mangoes uh, look a bit different. It's it's not so, it's a bit bigger. Like I've seen you, Ezra, eat like a smaller uh, type of mangoes. Ours can be a bit bigger and not so yellow. You know, it's yellow, but not mm. so orange. So yours might be a bit more orange. We also get that. But ours is a more like yellowish orange. So there's just different types of, and then obviously the basic apple and you get um, plums, all the other type of fruit, but not so many exotic fruits, you know, like um, mm -hmm. pomelos maybe. Which is fine. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think cool. that that's so amazing. Like right now we, I mean, it's it's quite cold here in Turkey right now. Like I'm in a sweater. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, we're try, like we try in general as a family to get like fresh in season produce, like nothing that's that's too crazy. Um, on occasion, I think the other day we ordered from this internet website, like uh, some watermelon. But aside from that, it's pure citruses now. So I, I've personally been like mono mealing on citruses this whole time for the past 20 days to like 30 days since I broke my fast. Um, yeah. and it's, but it's, it's so interesting. Cause I think like when you're eating cooked food, you, you really do crave variety. Like you, you don't, you feel tired eating the same thing over and over again. Right. Um, if you have like a chicken Caesar salad every single day, you're going to be tired of that after a while, you're going to be sick of it. But it's, it's interesting that when you're eating mono meals of That's oranges, true. Yeah, when you're eating mono meals of oranges or you're eating mono meals of mandarins and you have that for a couple of consecutive days, your body is perfectly fine with it. And you don't, I mean, it's nice to have variety still. Like I'd be like, if I had some mangoes, I would I would abolish that right now. But, <laughs> but I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind also just eating a, a big plate of mandarins for a couple of consecutive days 
and it still tastes amazing every time I sit down to have to it, have it, which is also something that's curious, you know, like um, but have makes you guys me think also, a little. Yeah. Yes, have you guys also found since you've been raw vegans that I eat so simple now? You know, everybody wants to, you know, like. They want you to post maybe things on the internet that looks exciting and you know similar to the cook food complexity but then sometimes i've got such boring meals i've got like you know uh, for breakfast two mangoes cut up you know the salad sometimes i just sometimes i don't even make a salad dressing i just like put lemon juice over it with some herbs and things yeah. like that you know and i don't even make like a proper salad dressing you know so what I found is that my, my eating is much more simplified. I think our bodies love the simplicity. They don't, it doesn't want the complexity yes. of all the different things at once. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. 100%. And I fully agree that, you know, low key, something that has been calling out as the ultimate truth to me as a revelation is simplicity, mm -hmm. right? Recently, where I'm realizing more and more that how beautiful it is to live simply and how powerful simplistic living is right and um, and i fully believe that growing up in the education system i've been taught to take certain thing at least with mathematics or whatever i was mm -hmm. you know doing take certain problem and make it complicated and then try to solve mm -hmm. it right and that's where my intelligence was geared at to make something simple complicated but now in hindsight, I fully believe without a shadow of a doubt that intelligence is making something complicated, simple, right? It couldn't be the other way. <laughs> so I think, um, I think growing up, we've been, you know, conditioned the other way, but I fully believe that if you were to take one piece at a time in your life, aspect by aspect, and take it from certain level of complication and make it simple, you're going to see the enhance and the elevation in the quality of life. At least I've been seeing that for sure, right? And food has been one part of it. For sure, like simplistic food, like being able to take just two mangoes or just like Esra currently, because there's not a lot of variety here in Saudi Arabia where I'm at. And um, we have mostly citrus fr uh, fruit. And I've just been mono mealing oranges, 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 like orange <laughs> club. I love it. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like the other day, I got 40 kilos of orange. Oh, I just what? bought it. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept it. So, and uh, my my family is having a lot of oranges too. So I think those 40 kgs are getting over in like 10 days, and then we go and buy another 40 <laughs> kgs. So. It's a lot of it's a lot of fruit, and also I'm trying to um, as much as I can replace like just filtered water mm. with oranges because mm. I'm mm. feeling more hydrated. Mm. I'm sure you guys can um, relate to that as well. I'm feeling much more hydrated. I'm not feeling the urge to just keep drinking uh, again and again. But I fully agree with your simplistic living, Judith. Um, and this is just food, right? Everything else, like if you were to stop procrastinating and stop um pushing things for later mm -hmm. and actually getting them done right now is going to take out that burden from your mind yeah. right um you know i just wanted to add so, yeah. exactly what came to me right now from uh you know just a thought is exactly as you were speaking that even relationships people overcomplicate mm. it you know it's like love being in love you know it's so simple it's almost boring you know it's like if you've got the best relationship it's it's not yeah. about the all this, um, you know, back and forth, uh, bickering and all of that. And, and people are addicted to that. That's also some sort of addiction. So that's also the simplicity in that is also just shows you how it's supposed to be simple, you know, and, and it, mm -hmm. it shows up everywhere. Um, you know, um, even if you, if you, even with your best friend, uh, or just with your loved ones, you know, it's like the best relationship are those ones where you can just sit for two hours and not say anything. You don't have to talk, you know, but you know that person is there for I you. Agree. It's simplicity, yeah. you know, and I think people overcomplicate everything because they want to, um, they, they create that. It's almost like an addiction. They think that's normal. That's not normal, you know. That's so yeah, interesting. That. Yeah. And and just I just want to add this last thing because it's hilarious. I, I, I go to a climbing gym over here and I just feel like a lot of people, there's a lot of people that come. So when I speak to them, 
many of the people, many many of the guys and the girls are in a in a in a relationship. And when I ask them, "How's your relationship going?" most of them are like complicated, complicated. Yeah, <laughs> it's a situation. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's uh, so interesting yeah. i never i never like looked at it from that light but really like when you really think about it even the fruits they're like they're nature's gift to you they're they're like these perfect balls of love of perfect water that our bodies can perfectly utilize encapsulated like and, and you just take it and you eat it and it's just the simplest thing and it gives you like everything that your body could possibly need and why wouldn't that, if that's the principle of you being alive, like your relationship with this food, why wouldn't that be the principle for everything? Um, you're absolutely right. Like I, I never, I just had like a very revolutionary moment. Um, exactly. Actually, it makes me think now, Judith, because uh, you were dealing with eczema previously, right? And that was like one of your mo main motivations to take a grasp on your health. Um, and I've seen also that you were sharing some content about more of like the metaphysical side of things, not just in relation to health. I think Quantum Insights is what your uh, Instagram yes. page is called. Yes. Um, and maybe oh, also wow. on YouTube. Um, so you're very much into like manifestation, uh, quantum leaping, like more the phys metaphysical side mm -hmm. of things, which I really think there is no physical without the metaphysical. Um, but I'm curious to know, like, how has that, like, the more spiritual side of things allowed you to um, enhance your health, like, in, or at least maybe overcome your issue with eczema, for instance? I think that um, with the metaphysical side of things, you need, everything goes together. So according to me, you need to have the right nutrition to have the, the downloads and everything coming from God consciousness or whatever people want to call it, the universe, you know, because you can't hear from all this noise. You know, if, if your body or this is like your channel, you know, your body is your channel. So uh, I definitely think that you need to eat very healthy. Like, like I, for me, it goes hand to hand. Like I'm so much more clearer. It, I just get such revelations, you know, from the universe so clearly that I never gotten before when I wasn't a raw vegan, my body wasn't this, this clean and, and, you know, um, mm. it's the right channel and you you operate on a much higher energy because the fruit and the vegetables energy is just way up there, you know, because it's, if you look at the photography from, you know, the Skirlian photography, I think that's what they call it, you know, like a raw fruit uh, to a cooked fruit or a vegetable, the energy is just what you are in digest, okay, you're digesting it. And, um, yeah, it's just amazing. I mean, um, before that, sometimes you 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 sometimes confused with some of the answers that the universe would give you. But I think I find that my spiritual side's grown tenfold since I've been um, also raw vegan, and it really mm -hmm. goes hand in hand for me, you know. And obviously, sometimes it speeds up your your um, your development spiritually as well, you know to have a deeper vibration eventually, you know, because we let go of some of the negative belief systems. So when I eat like this, then it comes so quickly to me what I need to get rid of, because once you get rid of something, like then you let go of that, that lower frequency, then your energy is freed up mm -hmm. because, I mean, our frequency naturally, our spirit frequency is very high, but with all our belief system that we bring from, from our environment, from school and our family and our parents, what they teach us, that's what the belief system, that's what's kind of holding you almost like down a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So once you overcome it's... certain aspects, then you actually free yourself. Uh, that part of you will be a bit more free. So your frequency will be much more integrated. It's, I think, um, I don't know if you've read some Dr. Joe Dispenza. I think one mm -hmm. of his books was really what started it for me. Actually, um, I know uh, yeah. we, we, yeah, we talk a lot about like food um, and how, how it's like really good for us and it's the key to optimal health. But I think the mind is very, very powerful. And when your mind is in the right place, like it's in, the, it's in a place where it's on the frequency of health and vibrance and vitality, you just align to that. Like you just gravitate to the things that make you healthy, that make you vibrant and feel alive, right? Um, and 
that was one of the things I think that that really started it for me because I had read um, Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Mm. Dr. I also Spencer. read that. It's amazing. It was the book yeah. that took me down, like it took me down the rabbit hole. I, I, I was actually I wasn't reading it. I was like I was um, listening, listening to the audiobook. Mm. They ha- yeah, they, they had them on they had them on YouTube, by the way. Like there's these books are so accessible and you can just put your earphones on, go on a walk and listen to it. And like three days it's finished. Um, and I was biking around Amsterdam listening to this to this book. And every time I'd, I'd like go on my bike and listen to it, it was like, oh, my God, this guy's a genius. This guy's a freaking genius. Like everything he said made so much sense. And um, I started applying what he was talking about was meditating. It was like visualizing things because I was I wasn't in a good place back then. Like I was depressed and just very anxious. And my life was a mess. <laughs> it wasn't good. Like it was a very rock bottom place. And so I, I consciously decided that I wanted to like take things, take matters into my own hands. And um, it really, it really like took me down this path of health. Like I, I started discovering information that I never would have even considered before. And uh, a lot of people come to this lifestyle out of desperation because they, they have some kind of severe mm-hmm. illness, sickness, um, or they hit some kind of crisis in their life and they come to it out of desperation. But I think there's always that thing within us. Um, it, it's present at all times, whether we realize it or not, that's always guiding us. That's always taking us in the right direction, exactly where we need to be at exactly the right time, whether we see it as good or bad, whether we see it as wrong or right or a mistake or you know a failure. There's really no mistakes in your path. Mm-hmm. You're destined to be exactly where you need to be. And the more you you, you took you get out of your mind and you bring your mind to your heart, I feel, and you live from your heart, you follow your heart's desires, your intuition, the more you're connected to, like you said, the God mind, like God that that tells you that you're exactly where you need to be. Like just keep following this road, keep following this journey. And in the right time, everything's gonna be made clear to you. Um yeah. and it, it's you might be experiencing it right now with your clients like people tend to get quite impatient right when when they're wanting to heal like a certain sickness or a disease but in reality everything that's happening in our bodies is out of love like all of the symptoms that our bodies express even like the mental downs that we might be experiencing the depressions the anxieties like they're all symptoms that your body is doing out of love for you there's really nothing wrong with you uh, inherently. There's nothing wrong at all, you know. It's just your body's way of co- combating things that might be, you know, an off- offense to your body. So um, I don't know. I just found that that revelation to be really, really beautiful because, like, I-, I agree with you that I don't think that the metaphysical and the spiritual side of things is really distinct from the physical. Like, it, it can only go hand in hand. And it- in every moment, we're creating for ourselves exactly where we are and where we're going it's all our choice at the end of the day you know um, exactly i and, really and rambled you know, on yeah no no uh that's <laughs> that's awesome what you said and and i think that's very true i mean i was always interested in this for since i can remember since i was like 16 you know years old mm-hmm. uh in the spiritual and you know everything i want to know everything since then you know i you know you you just read everything that you can get your hands on that you're interested in and you listen to people and everything and but uh, so i always had that but um so it doesn't mean that somebody has to be a raw vegan or you know to be spiritually very high energy or anything like that it's not a Mm -hmm. prerequisite but for me it just makes it so much easier now you know if i compare my journey that's what i mean so there's no right or wrong, you know, there's no right or wrong. These are just the things that, so these are choices. So nothing is right or wrong. So if somebody is still eating meat and having an amazing time in life and following their passion and everything, or, you know, uh, doing things like still drinking alcohol or whatever, you know, we can't judge that and we can't say that's wrong. You know, that's their path. Mm-hmm exactly yeah oh, yeah everyone's on yeah. a distinct path yeah no yeah. i fully hear you Fahad, do you want to yeah, add something hear to you, this Judith. thank you <laughs> do you want to add something to this yeah yeah, yeah no for sure you've been very quiet <laughs> 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 yeah no i'm just observing um and hearing you guys like yeah speak speak so well um and i fully agree i mean 
to begin with, uh, I, I acknowledge your point. Like everybody has their own path and everybody is doing it the way they want to do it. Um, and I can fully resonate to the point where you said that a lot of people have revelations all the time, like these downloads that we talk about it. One thing I want to definitely tell people, because something that has happened is people are reaching out and they're like, oh man, I'm on raw vegan, but no downloads. And I'm like, but bro, don't look for them. <laughs> don't like desperately <laughs> cling on <laughs> like don't get into raw vegan for the wrong reasons right like <laughs> like don't uh, uh, many things in life probably all the things in life if you if you're really looking for it they'll never show up right um they are probably there somewhere there but you're missing it so like if you're looking for the downloads all the time they're probably not happening um, or maybe one big download is just waiting to come at the right time for you. So just take it easy. Um, it'll come, it'll come, right? So for people who are listening. Um, <laughs> and um, secondly, um, the way that I've been saying it to people, at least where I'm here locally, I'm surrounded by a lot of people who now the month of Ramadan is coming. I'm, I'm located here in Saudi Arabia. And this is like the holy month of fasting. However, people are confused between fasting and Ramadan, right? I think that fasting should be happening pretty much all times. Ramadan is the time where you go more within you and, and truly try to analyze and see, um, be more closer to God. I think that's what Ramadan is, the concept of Ramadan, right? Uh, the month of Ramadan. And to be closer to God, God says, fast. If you, if you fast, you are automatically going to come closer to me. There is just no yeah. doubt about it. That's what Ramadan is. This is not the month of fasting. This is the month of coming closer. And the way you come closer is in you, in front of you. It is by fasting, right? And that's why it is mandatory to fast. Or if you don't want to fast, you can do other things as well um, to accommodate. Um, <laughs> but... I fully believe that, um, and, and this is literally what I've been telling people, is that when I'm in India, I'll say that this body is your temple, right? Mm -hmm. But when I'm in Saudi Arabia, I'll tell this body is you like your mosque, right? If I'm in, you know, probably anywhere else in the world, I'll say this body is your church, whatever, yeah. whichever part of, the, part of the world that I'm in. And I fully think that when you are on this diet, it makes it a lot easier for you to keep your mosque, your temple, your church as clean as yeah. possible, both from within and from outside. Yeah. And you will observe, right, for people listening, you will observe that one prayer from a clean mosque is equal to a thousand prayers from, uh, from a neglected mosque, mm. right? That's how closer you are to God, to this collective consciousness um, that, that God is and we are part of. So if you if you if you want to have quality, if you want to have that closeness to the, the 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 everything around you, keep your mosque, um, keep your church. You're the father. You're, so the mosque is the body, and you're the father or the imam or or the the, the guru of the the temple, right? So you have that connection with uh, God so much more easier, and it's on you. You are the master. You are the one who chooses uh, to make the choices to either keep this dirty or keep this clean. Yeah, well, you said it so perfectly, actually. Um, God doesn't want to dwell in a, a, a dirty house. You're absolutely right. Like if you keep your, your temple clean, your mosque clean, your church clean, it's, it's going to make it so much easier for something that's divine to dwell in it. And you're a divine being. So why not? I mean, you owe it to yourself to to be in a healthy body, to be able to be connected to something much higher than yourself. I think you said it so beautifully. I almost want to capture that in like a little reel and put it on my, my Instagram. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank and, you, and, I and I'm glad that you were able to come out. It's a good reminder. Real quick, I just no, want to no. acknowledge Esra mm -hmm. as well. Like, I'm so glad that you're able to come out and these books, self-development books, mm -hmm. got you out of... Uh, the, the depressing times in Amsterdam. Who would have thought? I think a lot of people do get depressed in Amsterdam, I think, because they go to Amsterdam for the wrong reasons. <laughs> it's popular for... <laughs> but, well, yeah. yeah, and there's, you know, you know, what's really interesting is, like, people have so much going on behind the mask that they're wearing mm. all the time. 
Um, and that's why right now, like I've, I've truly, truly discovered the, the uh, importance and authenticity because, you know, I think I've mentioned in the last podcast, but what I basically said was I have two different Instagram accounts right now, one for my personal one that I use. I don't really want to start that one with my whole raw food page and, you know, everything that I share on my other one because I'm like, no one here is really going to be interested in that. So I started a new, a new one from scratch. And I found that whenever I alternate between those two Instagram pages and I go back to the other one, my personal one, like every everything that I see on there, it just gives me this vibe of like, I don't, it, make, it doesn't make me feel good, you know, because I don't feel connected to people there. And granted, social media kind of um, files down a bit of that ability to connect because you don't see people face to face. You're not really like, you know, mm. you're not really physically in touch with them. It's, it's very different, of course, but still... When I go on that page, it's like everyone's everyone looks happy and everyone looks like they're they're enjoying life, doing great things like, you know, getting married, having kids, starting a family, all of these things, getting promoted. And like they're showing all the, the highlights in their lives. Um, and I'm like, yeah, that's amazing, like amazing to see that you're accomplishing these things. But it's like it. Uh, I, I can't really find the authenticity in people when I go on that side of Instagram. Um, whereas when I go on my, my current page, um, still, obviously it's, it's not as authentic as speaking to people in real life, but you can see the brutal side of healing as well. You know, it's not all rainbows and unicorns and butterflies all the time. You know, people go through some serious, serious stuff. And it's like, I think we're, we're so scared of like certain emotions that, we've traumatized our, ourselves into masking and like just keeping bottled up and stagnating within our bodies that we can't fully let ourselves shine. Like if you're feeling anxious and you're feeling scared and just, I don't know, in a, in a hopeless place, depressed, like I was when I was in Amsterdam, I was like, people don't want to see that. Like they just want happy people. Mm -hmm. They just want like people that are, are, are you know, uplifted and are going to bring a smile to your face and, like they don't want someone that's sulking around. So it's, I know, I know like there's a lot of people everywhere, regardless of whether it's Amsterdam or like the most livable countries in the world that are, you know, just barely getting by on antidepressants, pills and bunch of stuff. Like that's, you know, not just keeping them surviving and not really thriving. Um, and I didn't want to go down that path. You know, I, I knew I wasn't in a good place. Um, but the reality was like, I wasn't, I wasn't in a place where I was willing to show that to the world. So um, I think that was what really took a long time for me to like come to terms with, because you can only heal what you're willing to accept within yourself. And if you completely accept yourself, complete self acceptance, acceptance is, is just pure love, you know, like that's, if you can only heal what you love um so i guess also that's the hardest what, thing to do yeah yeah especially when you're in that place like I, if you're watching this and you're like in a dark place and you're just whether it's you know some physical symptoms that you might be experiencing or mental or emotional like turmoil like you know i get you <laughs> i get you like it's we owe it to ourselves to get us or get ourselves out of that you know um and it's not always the easiest thing to do for someone that's going through that um, it is in reality, it is, but the mind, like like Judith mentioned earlier, can really be conditioned by worldly beliefs, ungodly beliefs, um, so to speak, that can really get in the way of that. And that's why it's it's so important to step back here into your heart center and realize that that's what this is telling you is not not all that you are, you know. But you know, um, there is so a, there, yeah. Sorry, I just want to quickly add to you that um, there's no perfect formula, so. You know, for some people, uh, you know, they still would like to take medication for something. You know, I, I don't see it as such a negative thing. That's their journey, you know. Yeah. Um, you can't be judgmental if somebody's taking antidepressants and they're eating really healthy and they're trying to steer their their um, life into an order. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's their part of their journey, you know. And you mm -hmm. can't say, you know, in the healthy um community the health community you know uh, nobody's showing their weaknesses you know it's like everybody is like oh i'm so perfectly 100 percent healed you know mm. um i'm always doing well i never get sick i never have the flu i never feel depressed i never feel anxious you know and 
they don't always show their truth. You know, uh, when they're down in the dumps, they don't want to share that, obviously, because they think people are going to say, you know, why are you like this? They're going to judge them. If, mm -hmm. you, if you're doing healing or if you're helping other people, you should be perfect all the time, you know? Yeah. But it's yeah, just a it's journey true. as well. Everybody's still going through a journey. We're trying our best to to reach a, a level that we are happy with and that we yeah. uh, we can exist every day and we you know so it's, it's uh, this is our journey and that's your journey what you went through as well and i'm sure that everybody goes through some type of depression in their life one part or their life or the other you know like when i was a student i studied at university i was also uh, in a bit of a slump you know and it was very hard for me to come out of it so it's, it's sometimes you go through these uh, dips and ups and downs, you know. Thankfully, I could come out of it, you know. I was fine afterwards, but uh, it was very hard, you know. And you have to find your own way, you know. Like, this is your way of, of doing it. But if somebody wants to take medication for it, they must take medication if that's, that's, um, if they, uh, that's how they feel that that's going to help them. You know, it's always about that person's journey. We can't tell somebody all medicine is bad even if we wouldn't take it do you understand that's what i yeah. think mm. yeah actually yeah you no i i fully agree with you because it just made me think again like we condition our minds again like we, we we condition our minds to think like raw foods are the way or like no medication is the way and yeah that might be true for us and and the path that we're on like you said but I truly believe that at the end there are there really are no mistakes like we all go through things for a reason and if we mm -hmm. if we are in a place where my brother for instance he's we're like we're twins by the way he's my twin brother and we're like gemini twins he's my complete opposite <laughs> um we were in a similar place two years ago i don't know if it's like some kind of astrology astrological thing but we were going through some <laughs> similar dips in our lives um, we connected very well two years ago because we're like, I guess, on the same level. Um, and at the time, he he was very like, you know, into the metaphysical side of things as well, even though he was going through like this existential depression himself. Um, and we ha he ended up going to Australia. You know, he started taking taking antidepressants, and right now he's on his way to becoming a medical doctor. And I'm here on the other side of the spectrum advocating for, you know, natural healing and, um, you know, trusting your body and all of this. Um, and it's it can very be easy to, like, get into that trap of duality, so to speak. Like, that's wrong and this is right or this mm -hmm. is wrong and that's right. And that's what creates a division. And it's it, it can be really easy to do that. Like, it's, it, I feel like it's almost a trap, you know. But when you do that, you're judging a plan that is that is unfathomable like it's it's there for a reason there is no wrong or right or good or bad it's just what you're how you're perceiving it and how you're seeing it you know um whereas if you just accept completely that everything is perfect just the way it is even if it doesn't look that way in that moment like you're at peace with everything no matter if, if someone is like trying to torture you like if someone is trying to like constrict you in some kind of way like you're you're completely unbothered because you're detached from everything that's going on. Like you're you're present, but you're detached. <laughs> it's like a paradox almost, you know. And that's I don't know. It's yeah. like the beauty of life. I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and for people who are um, listening to this, uh, like Judith said, full on. Um, I'm gonna support that. Where um, it, we as raw foodists um, have because. To be human is to possess all of these emotions and and energies in you. To to not have those at all is to just lie to yourself that you're not uh -huh. to be to not be a human, right? So we uh, we as raw foodists or fruitarians go through this as well. Um, although in my experience, I think that being able to my my secret to keeping myself the way. I want it to be is meditation and a bit of yoga that I do, right? That is, meditation is something that I've been doing for a few years now. And um, this has been my secret, my recipe to essentially keeping sure that exactly what, uh, ex to keep myself in a state that I truly want to be in. 
exactly the way mm-hmm. I want to be in. Because I fully think that end of the day, what we call as happiness, sadness, misery, depression, anxiety, these are nothing but chemicals. Mm-hmm. Nothing but chemicals, right? Inside, if one were to see, these are just chemicals like happiness comes from dopamine. It's a chemical. These are all chemicals that go and shot, shoot your brain and you feel a certain way. And my take on this is cert- uh, is slightly different where I think that if you were to take any sort of pills or any sort of medicine, these are chemicals as well, right? So what we are doing is that we are saying essentially, oh, we don't have control over the chemicals in our body. So we need to take an external chemical to be able to feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. But my take slightly different on this where I'm like, if you pay full attention to yourself, you are in a bubble where you are so conscious and aware of exactly what chemical is being produced right now and what is not. Because one thing we can all agree is that this is not nothing but a chemical factory, right? Like this human body. And it's the most sophisticated chemical factory on the planet. Like you could combine all the chemical factories on the planet, still not be able to create such a such a complicated chemical factory on the planet, right? The way things, the way we reason things, the way the way we are conscious, the way we can create sadness, emotions, anger, stress, depression, all chemicals. And I feel like um, when you're so conscious and aware of, of what is going on through you, going on in you, you take the, the driving seat and you can create dopamine when you want. You can create sadness when you want. You can create anti-depressing, um, you know, pills whenever you want because you are in control of this chemical factory. Mm. Um, and to be able to to mm. make this easier, this process easier, maybe raw food is the recipe for me now to make this process easier. Um, so just to add to mm. Judah, I think raw food and fruit make it easier mm. for you to the driving seat. Because if you're not on the driving seat of this body, let's say you're turning this way, but your car goes that way, anxiety is normal. It's natural Mm. to feel anxious. It's natural to feel stressed out because you want to do that, but you end up doing this. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're going to... But you are 100%, I totally agree with you. Um, But, um, you know, what you're saying is you have to know yourself. So you are very spiritually and what you know about yourself, you know yourself so well. You're so in tune with yourself that you can actually feel how to fix yourself in a way. So like, for example, for me, I would also do yoga every day because I know that aligns me. I would, if I feel out of alignment, like I've been driving in traffic, I just listen to a bit of meditation music or something. But like you have that understanding, your your um, your frequency is so integrated that you have such awareness, but not everybody is on your level of understanding and the thing is uh, not everybody will be able to do what you saying like immediately recognize that there is some kind of imbalance in the body then you can do something to lift your mood or meditate to align yourself so your hormone production Mm -hmm. is better you know and uh, that's what I actually meant so I totally uh, agree with you 100% Mm -hmm. yeah yeah for sure I think um I'm not sure where this quote is from. Oh, actually, maybe it's in the Bible, actually. But (laughs) it's like um, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Um, Mm. And I think Rumi, Mm. who is a Sufi mystic, uh, one of my favorite poets, I've been reading his poetry like crazy nowadays. Um, He uh, he says everything that you could ever need is within you. Um, And it's true. Like, it's like, what those chemicals when we when we take the the pills or when we re- rely on the pills again not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing but um it does kind of um uh, affirm that we're relying on something external to bring those you know bring make up for something that's not within our body mm-hmm. but the reality is there there's everything everything that is that you need that you could ever need is already within you it's in your repertoire (laughs) whatever um is in your body is already everything that you could need to to survive um which is really interesting because you know people think um nowadays or i guess the paradigm might have you thinking that 
fasting is the most dangerous thing you can do. Like you can't go more than three days without putting yourself in severe danger and all of these narratives that are against, I think there are some, some uh, verses that have actually been thwarted or taken out of the Bible because of that. I've studied the Bible a lot recently. <laughs> um, and anyways, uh, so it, what's really interesting is like when you fast, the most uh, like crazy testimonies of healing happen like after after like a prolonged period of fasting um because i fasted with lauren like i've, I've been consuming his content i watched all of his testimonies there are people that reverse stage four cancer one of his craziest stories there was a man quite overweight that had stage four cancer and this guy quite like it was, it was a pretty unusual anomaly type of situation but he fasted for four and a half months because he had enough reserves on him to be able to go that length of time. That length of time is not a normal period of time. I think the most wow. he does is six weeks. Four and a half months, 18 weeks, I think, was what it was. Um, That's like 135 days, right? Yeah, yeah. more than 100 days, wow. which is insane. But this guy had wow. stage four. He started he off. The yeah, so the, the plan apparently was to go six weeks in the beginning. Um, and after the six weeks, he said, I'm going to keep going, whether you supervise me or not. And he asked for his <laughs> guidance still. And Lauren was like, okay, I'll supervise you. The guy had nothing to lose. I mean, he, he had stage four cancer. He had, he, he had yeah. lots to gain and definitely nothing to lose. Um, so it was that or, or the grave, like that was the, the choice he was making. And he went six and six, um, sorry, 18 and 18 weeks eating no food, just drinking water. And by the end of the 18 weeks, he broke his fast and there was no trace of cancer left in his body. Wow. That's and it's wall. like, you don't do anything. Literally, don't interfere with your body in any type of way. And it regenerates you. It heals you. Like, that's how, that's how when we trust in our body's ability to heal, like when we truly, truly acknowledge that everything that we could literally need is literally within us, that's what we can accomplish that's what we that what like what becomes a reality what we can witness in our bodies it's so incredible and when i heard that story i was like that's crazy <laughs> it's crazy but it's not because it's like that it's the truth like there's nothing there's nothing that is you know is beyond that it's wild it's, yeah yeah no, it's, it's amazing. And I mean, anything is possible, you know, I mean, you know, people do, what do they call it? I think it's breath, 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 they breath breathe. Yeah, sorry, I and I mean, yeah. there's some people that don't eat even, you know, and, you know, it's all about there's everything out there in the universe, you can choose that everything is possible. It's just do you really believe it 100% in your heart is possible, then you can choose that reality, yeah. you know, so uh, maybe there's other realities that exist that this guy who had the stage four cancer in one reality he died maybe he died from the water fast other mm. reality he died from the actual cancer he never did the water fast and then he chose this reality where he did the four months water fast and he healed himself you know and yeah. and that's because he maybe needs a purpose in his life and that's what he chose so now he can speak to everybody who's got cancer and they can um believe in themselves enough so they can also do it so it's, it's all about um, taking back your power that we're not victims so it's not the victim mentality it's that that we powerful human beings and we have everything within us we just have to uh, tap into that yeah exactly yeah exactly yeah no for sure that's uh that's incredible right the power of body um of our body um just the other day i um so a few years ago, back, uh, you know, back, back, backstaging a few years ago, um, this was like five years ago or something, I was playing badminton and I completely uh, twisted my ankle, my right ankle. And it hurt it so bad because I tore all the ligaments apparently. Mm -hmm. And it was not a fracture, but apparently when you tear ligaments, it hurts more. So I was really in agony. And at that time, um, being on a usual diet, being on a normal diet not a natural diet normal diet i think that cook cook food is normal it, it is normal you see it everywhere but if i if i had to in my perception if i had to give the term natural natural food is fruit right natural is fruit and cook food is normal 
And so I was on a normal diet and it took me the same injury. It took me like three months to completely heal myself, totally fully heal myself. And um, so that happened. And then my, foot, my, 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 my ankle was completely healed. And then just two months ago, while I was on an orange fast, just oranges and sometimes just eating nothing. So just water fast. I twisted my ankle again, the same place, same thing, hurt it so bad. And I was like, oh no. And this was the second time. So, you know, the second time, the same place, the same way, not through badminton, but by climbing. And I was like, oh no. So maybe it's going to take another three months and I have to wait another three months, rest another three months. But this time the mindset was different, right? Five, five years fast forward. This time the mindset was different. The diet was different. Everything was different. I pretty much healed this in 15 days, in two weeks. Wow. I was totally healed, <laughs> uh, completely fasted. I did not fast for 15 days, but I was completely on an orange fast and did not, and just water fasting like every alternate days for 36 hours and um, fully healed myself. Wow. So I think, and I fully believe now looking at my own body, that this body and all of our bodies is, has been, has been, um, created with um, with perfection for sure. Yeah, and anything is possible because you made yourself believe yeah. you can do it. Then you did it, and you now you you feel amazed that you can do this. And then you're thinking, what else can you do with this? You know, with this information, what else can what can yeah. you? Do? That's the, that's the beauty. Like that's the beauty of really really believing in yourself. Because when you put the power into things like fasting or you know mm -hmm. raw foods or something like that you're these are great things like i'm not gonna speak down on them but you're still putting your power into something that, that's external that's outside of you but when you put that within yourself and realize it within yourself it's like i did this amazing thing what more amazing things can i do and it's just like you constantly make goals of out of like accomplishing things that other people might perceive as impossible you know and it's I don't know. It's just so incredible. I think like what we can really accomplish when we really know ourselves, you know, on a deep, deep core level, we're infinite beings. <laughs> exactly. There's nothing that we can't do. Exactly. Yeah. You take on this path. Cool. Awesome. I think uh, we will go ahead and wrap up, right? Esra, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless there's anything else that you, Judith, or yeah, Fahad, you guys want to add, we can. I think I up. think uh, yeah. I don't feel like I have to share any more. I think this is what I feel that was meant to be shared from my side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. But the last thing I would like for you to share is where can people find you? Yes, yes. My page is Conscious Living three one five on Instagram and also on uh, oh, yeah. YouTube and also quantum insight underscore quantum insights that's my two channel uh that's the one with the metaphysical teachings that's still a small i just started it recently <laughs> and the the raw food one uh with the coaching is conscious living 315 amazing Perfect. amazing thank you so much i'll definitely thank drop you. these in the in the description thank you so much judith for everything that you shared and esra and me at also i think for everything that we collectively <laughs> shared for yeah. people listening today um hope this was of value and um guys do not forget to let us know what you think about our discussion drop down in the comments um and make sure to hit the like button and that red button subscribe um because you have the power literally people listening have the power to be able to go out there and bring this conscious way of conscious thought process and conscious living in front of more people so yeah thank you thank you everyone thank you judith thank and you everyone thanks, watching. thanks for everyone <laughs>